All right, let's carry this algorithm out. Now, I'm going to leave this edge up for a bit because we, we, it's very important that everybody understand this. It's also very important that it's done correctly. And when I'm doing these with slides, my track record is about 80%. Uh, and I should be working with a computer, but I'm not. So the ford fulkerson labeling of vertices is listed in order, hopefully, on the right. Let's work through it together. I start by labeling the source with the triple star plus infinity. That's the default initialization. Now I scan from S, but I scan in the order of the pseudo-alphabetic ordering. So I first look at T. Is there an edge from S to T? No. Move on. Is there an edge from S to A? No. Move on. Is there an edge from S, a linking S and B? Yes. Is that edge, is it forward or backwards? Forward. Is it full? No. Label B. Label B how? It gets its label from S, moving in a positive direction with spare capacity 12. Does everybody see and understand that second line? Because if you're stuck here, we're, it'll only get worse. Question? It's, I hope it's 50 minus 38. Yeah, that's the spare capacity. You could increase, irrespective of everything else in the network, you could increase the flow on that edge up to 12 units. And, and you, at least locally, that would be OK. You could increase it 5. You could increase it 10, 11, 12, but not 13. Any, any other questions? All right, now let's look to C. How about S to C? Is there an edge from S to C? Yes. And it goes in the forward direction. But it's full, so we don't label C. We move on to D. Look at, uh, is there an edge linking S and D? Nope, S and E. Yes, but it's full, so we don't label it. OK. E, F, G. There's no H, so it goes through G, okay. So my scan would go up through F and G, but I wouldn't label them based on the scan from S. So I then drop down in my list and scan from the first vertex in the list where I've not scanned from previously. I've just completed the scan from S, so I have labeled B, that's the only one I labeled. So I drop down to B, and now I scan from B. But I scan in the pseudo-alphabetic order. So I first try to go from B to T, but I can't. B to A. Well, B is a neighbor of A, but the edge goes backwards and is empty. So I can't label A. All right. B to C. B to C, uh, there's an edge. It goes forward, but it's full, so I can't label B. B to, B to D. B to D goes backwards, but it's empty. Can't label it. B to E. Well, E is currently unlabeled. There is an edge linking B and E. But from B, it goes backwards. And that backwards edge is not empty, so I label E, and I label it with B negative 9. Now, where did the 9 come from?
That's where it came from. That's inarguably correct. What, what I'm looking for someone to say is that amount is wrong. What should it be? Why? And the excess uh, and the, the, the flow from E to B. Exactly right. I'm, I'm going to say again what you said just so that everybody can hear it. He said the, the quantity 9 is wrong. It is 33 minus 24, but that's not correct. The correct computation is I've got the, cap the capability of getting to be 12 units. I have the capability of taking away on the edge between B and E up to 24. So the minimum of 12 and 24 is 12. So the quantity on B should be 12. I mean, it should be B minus and 12. Now, just remember that. Because when we publish these slides, we'll make that change. Okay. Now I'm I'm still question. I noticed a typo on one of the slides. So T on this one uh, for F and T, since the edge from F to T has capacity 48, but the flow is 13. What's wrong with that? Gosh, I hope not. Uh, what's the flow into F? The flow into F is 13. That comes from an 8 and a 5. And the flow out from F must be 13, which it is. So, no, I don't think that's a typo. That's, that's correct. OK. So we are scanning from B. We label E. Then we, we look for F and G, and uh, you can't, there is no edge between B and F. There is an edge between B and G, but it's full. All right, so the only vertex that you label from B is E. All right, now your next scan comes from vertex E. You drop down one position in the list. So now we'll, it's very important that you're actually doing this in this pseudo-alphabetic order. You look, at, you look for an edge from E, linking it with T. Then you look at E to A, then E to B. But you wouldn't look at B. B is already labeled. You only look for edges that are going to label vertices that you haven't labeled yet. So you would look at E and C and E and D. You look at D. Now, when you look at D, you would say, can I label D? And the answer is yes. From E in the positive direction with amount 8. Where did the 8 come from? It's the minimum of two numbers. How much could I get to E? Well, up there it says 9, but we know we can get 12. But how much can you push across from E to D? No more than 8 additional units, because that's 29 minus 21. So the label we put on E, I mean on D, is E in the positive direction, 8. OK, now that, that's all you can get from E. Now you drop down to D. What can you label from D? I see, and I, but it's important you do it in the order. You, you do T first. No, I can't get nothing here. Can I label A? Yes. Uh, There, now, here is a real typo. You see the, uh, the label on A is not correct. What should it be? Yeah, it should be not F plus 7. It should be D plus 7. 
Does everybody see that? Should be D plus. The scan is currently taking place from D. All right. And now, after I've labeled A, I would then label F. So the label on F, uh, right or wrong? He says it's right. Well, there's a spare capacity of 40. Why isn't 40? Because I can only get 8 to D. So even though there's spare capacity of 40, I can only push 8 across. So the amount that I put on F is an 8. It's always a minimum of two things. OK, that completes the scan from D. And then I try to scan from A. I, I look at the sink. Can't use it. Uh, I've already labeled F. I, I, no, I, I would, yeah, and I'd look at G. And I can label G. I get a label from A in the positive direction with an amount of 4. Does everybody see that? I have the capacity of getting 8 to A, but there's only a spare capacity of 4. So G gets the label A plus 4. That completes the scan from A. Now I drop down to F. The first thing I try to do is scan the sink. Ah, there's an edge linking F and T. It's forward, and it's not full. All I got to do is figure out the amount. The spare capacity is 35. The amount I can get on F is 8, so I label T with the triple F plus 8. All right, so I now know, once I just, sorry, I now know exactly the amount that I'm going to change the flow by. Now, I'm going to discover my augmenting path by backtracking. So, this is why this notation is useful. What's the label on T? F plus 8. So T got its label from F. Now I just go up. Where did F get its label? It got its label from D. I read up. Where did D get its label? It got its label from E. I read up. Where did E get its label? It got its label from B. Where did B get its label? B got its label from S. So the backtracking discovers the path. And as I'm reading the the, uh, as I'm doing the backtracking, I'm identifying whether the edges are forward or backwards. And now I just change the edges on that path, change the flow on those edges by this quantity V, sometimes plus, sometimes minus, depending on whether it's forward or backwards.